Hi everyone, it's Cherie from Paper Pieces and Leftovers and I was asked to help with this file from MarjorieAnnDesigns.com called Snowman S'mores Valentine. This is the little guy with the beanie. There's one with a top hat, one with earmuffs, and one inside of a cocoa mug. All of them are going to be done the same way as far as them being on the little graham cracker with the chocolate except for the guy in the mug. And I will give you the piecing instructions on which way to layer. And more so towards the end, I will give you the color of everything. Dry piecing is very important to ensure you have all of your pieces and it's going to look the way you want because once it's glued, you can't undo it. So first to go down is the smaller of the two. This is actually the same color as Franklin Bear. It is American Crafts Caramel. And all I did, instead of using my regular uh, crunchy leaf by Lawn Fawn to go around, which is a darker brown, I used Memento's Peanut Brittle to give it more of a graham cracker look with the brown. Uh, my chocolate color, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to find it. It is American Crafts Coordinations uh, French Roast. I did swatch it though, and the color Chestnut by American Crafts is going to be your go-to for the closest color to that dark brown. Now my little white polka dot red paper came out of a doodle, du a doodle bug pack. The Nouveau drops were a fail. I just am gonna let you guys see that I did destroy the piece and had to rip it off. The lines you see on my base are my markings on where the pieces lay and little tick marks so I know where to glue everything so I don't have to recenter it. I've already centered it. And this is focused more for my new scrapbookers and people that are just learning. So the first piece that's gonna go down is the smaller of the two brown cracker pieces. And the second one, you're gonna see like little notches on the side. It's gonna line up right above the notches and that's gonna be the bigger graham cracker piece, the bigger brown. I laid my chocolate piece over. You're gonna have a little bit of a gap above the second, the biggest, um, graham cracker piece and I just sized it where I thought it looked okay the best of my ability because there is no marker for it to be right or wrong. Now I did use American Crafts textured white for him and his arms are going to be American Crafts Coordinations Java Bean. That is the color I went with. Now I did go through and swatch the book for you guys. Well, not the book, the Encore swatch book. I swatched the arms, that way I could get you the closest color. And Encore's color Cattail is the best for branches and wood. I have a pack of that and that is my next go-to, but I'm not quite done with the Java Bean on my um, mat yet. But once I'm done and out of that one because it's old paper, I'm going to switch it over to the cattail. So once you get that bigger chocolate piece glued down, you'll glue his arms down and then the bottom part of the cube that doesn't have the eyes or the mouth attached to it. And here is the piece where you got confused and I already, I knew it as soon as I seen it. I'm like, what does this go to? It does cut out white and Cricut design space, change it to black. That's supposed to go behind his head to give the eyes and the mouth the black color instead of the white base color. And you do have an option to glue the eyes and the mouth onto the solid piece if you don't want to do the cutouts. So she did give you several options. You can use that solid white piece and glue your eyes and mouth onto it, or you can change it to black and put it behind the head that has the eyes cut out along with the mouth. Now my little dotted paper, they're tiny little dots. This came out of a doodle bug pack. They're in several of the packs. I know that um, the Magic Kingdom one has it. A few of the Valentines have it. The Christmas ones have it as far as the white dots. So the six by six is what I get them from because the 12 by 12s, the dots are a lot bigger. 12 by 12 cardstock shop has the doodle bug six by six packs and that's where I get them. So after you glued the body on, then you'll do the scarf tails and then the neck to the scarf. I dry pieced it and I marked it on my base. We are to line it up that way it was just the right amount below his head, not too high, not too low. And 
I was so excited getting him together and wait until you see what I do with the Nouveau drops with my trimmers. It's pretty rough. It hurt me, so it's going to hurt you. <laughs> Just kidding. It was painful. Now, the second issue was the brim. You have two brims and you probably are like, why? So one brim should cut out red and one should cut out white. The red one or the red one with the word cut out, you can place the white behind it to make it illuminate through the red word love. Or you can cut it out with the solid red and cut the word love out and glue it on like I did. The reason I glued the letters on individually is because I used Wink of Stella and there was really no way for me to get it on with precision um, if it was inside the brim of the hat. So after you glue his head on, you'll then glue the top of your beanie and then the brim. I glued the nose on. That is the color uh, Mandarin Orange by Encore. My solid red is going to be Basil's Pomegranate. And for his eyes, I use Smooth Black. My black mouth, I just used the gel pen from Cricut to Cricut Cut to draw it on. Well, fill it in once the pen drew it in um, for me. Here's the letters. That is actually a Xyron sticker maker sheet. And it is something I use when I have small letters, especially on days that I have tremors. It's a convenience for me, but it's not a necessity. I did import him into Cricut Cut Design Space at 10.5 width and the lock is on so my height auto adjusted. All three of these guys on the cracker, the graham cracker, are going to be pieced the same way. The only difference is you're going to put the top hat on last or the earmuffs on instead of the beanie. Everything else is going to go in the same order. Now for this, that string is actually able to be cut out. It is part of the file, but I'm extra. You guys know that. Hobby Lobby sells something that is a baby yarn. It's very, very small, like baker's twine. And I am going to sidetrack here. I want to do this file, and I was showing you guys that it is generally me looking at my tablet to know which order they go in because I look at my finished picture on my tablet, but it had timed out. So I opened it to show you guys what my plans, because I love gingerbread, are going to be for after I catch up on all the new Franklin and Frannies that have been coming out. But back to this little um, baby yarn. It is in black, and I was tempted to use the red and white Baker's twine, but it was too much red and white on him, so I opted for black. And this is going to be an easier starter piece for new people because there are no eyelashes for him. Here's the Baker's Twine that I originally had in mind because I was just like, how perfect is this? But once I held it up next to him, it was just too much red and white. And I needed to break up a lot of the red and white. So I went with black. And for the bottom heart, I just didn't glue all the way to the bottom. I went just a smidge above. That way I could lift my yarn up and cut the end off so there wasn't any end showing. And I glued the bottom one on first and then the top one and then the middle. That way they were as evenly placed as I could get them. Now here is my Nouveau Nightmare. This is the color Ebony Black. It is Crystal Drops by Nouveau. And when I have tremors, I cannot trace, I cannot draw, I can't do eyelashes. And I guess I can't fill in a hole even though there's a guide. It went all over the place. I did clean it up the best I could with my silicone tip on my um, tweezers. And then I went through with my white corrector pen. It, I knew that it was there. And I would never give this away or sell it to somebody knowing that I had made such a huge mistake. Just because I don't know if that pen's going to rub off in somebody's um, page protector or in the mail even. I, I don't know. I can't guarantee that that's not going to lift my corrector pen. So I then left this part of the video in to show you guys I do make mistakes. And this is how you correct them. Instead of throwing him completely away you can actually get between the layers of paper and remove the top layer of paper. It's normally not difficult, but the thing is, is this wasn't glued down, so I was going under both 
both pieces, well, the one piece, but I was going under the entire piece instead of getting in between them because paper actually peels apart very easily once you break it. That's why when your edges fray with some of your cuts, you can take it and split the piece into two. I didn't do it to the base. I did it. I'm going to do it to the cube. That's his head. And we're going to preserve everything else. And here I was saying it was my fault, one with the tremors, but two, because I should have put it upside down in my 3D printed bottle holder because it burped and that made it worse. Well, you know, mistakes were made, but everything is fixable in crafting. You know, Bob Ross is one of my favorites and there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. Those happy trees. Well, here I did go ahead and I'm peeling off that layer like I explained. We're going to take as much off as we can without ruining our base. There is the mess with the Nouveau Drops. Let's just not. I did end up pausing the video. That way I could recut out the head and the black piece that goes behind it. And it was a smooth transition because I just paused my camera and then clicked record again, unpause. And so you guys probably didn't even notice the transition there because I didn't move the camera for you to notice that there was any change to what I was doing. Now, my white pieces, you do not have to do this. This is an option. If you have white on white, you kind of want to separate it. Otherwise, it just melts into the other pieces it's laid on. Versa Magic is archival ink, so it's permanent. I don't go deep into the piece like when I ink my brown for Franklin or how I inked my um, chocolate piece or my graham cracker. I try to do just the edges because that gives it the definition so you can see the difference where one piece starts and one piece stops. Plus the edges look a lot cleaner with um, inking them. If you don't have those, Tim Holtz Distress has a really pretty baby blue but Lawn Fawn does as well. You just have to play around with your options, what you have, what you can afford. And part of my reservations on sharing all this with people was, I feel bad when you guys tell me I'm in your pockets because that's not what I'm trying to do. And don't try to buy the moon in one night. Slowly build up your, your stash and your collection and your tools and do it over time and definitely hit up sales. So this is how I fixed my snowman without having to recut out the hat and the nose and the pom-pom and everything else. I just removed off with his head and that was it. Literally, that was all I did. Now I am gonna show my chalk pencils in my live. They're General's chalk pencils. I got them from, Am. well, my mom got them for me for my birthday from Amazon and I went and bought three more packs. I don't know if they're 36 or 48 just because I have a ton of them. But in my live, I will show you how easy they are to blend with just a Q-tip or your finger. It doesn't really matter and they erase nicely. So here, after you get all of his pieces on, you're going to add all of the accessories, such as the hearts on the string, attach the string to his hand, put the little hearts on his tummy, on the bottom cube, the bottom part of the marshmallow. And at the eye cutouts, this is where I was telling you, his mouth and the eyes, you can either glue them on to the solid piece or inside of the piece of the cutout. And that'll actually help you with placement a lot easier. So it's even. I know sometimes if you let me try to place it, he's going to have one eye high and one eye low. I did not do the eyebrows. It just sometimes eyebrows for me, it kind of throws them off. And... I think because they're uneven or I don't like how they look and I don't know what color to use for him in the picture they're brown but I can't foresee myself giving him brown eyebrows I just I can't that's part of why I lowered his hat a little bit more was to make up for not having to throw eyebrows on him so now it's just adding detail with pan pastels these I actually found out from another person who did YouTube videos well she does I seen her using them and I was like, hey, what is that? Because that is really bright and my uh, Stampin' Up! chalks don't even have that much pigment to them. So I went ahead and added my um, pan pastels to all the red. And now this is what I did want to point out. If you are using a gel pen, 
use it before you use your chalk. That's part of what will stop up your pen is the chalk. And if you are using the chalk first, then just try not to go where you're going to put your gel pen. I ended up erasing the blush after I put it on. It, you could see all of the indentations in the paper, all of the, the weave, and it just, it wouldn't go on evenly. So if you are just adamant about using blush, I would recommend tearing, not tearing, um, using smooth cardstock instead of texture, just because it is going to be very gritty. You see, you can see all of, I just wasn't happy with that. And this was me trying to zoom in so you guys could see the pencil and it being um, uh, blended. There you go. But it, um, I cropped it too much. Sorry about that. The pencil, like I said, I'm going to do it in my live. You'll see more of it and I'll use a black or a brown, just something a little darker. And there's me getting rid of the blush because I did not want to see every single square in the paper. I have not gone over his mouth yet. I'm just going to use uh, the gel pen, like I said, from Cricut to fill in his mouth and you'll see that in the finished thumbnail. But generally he goes together pretty easy. It's just figuring out what the extra pieces were for. And like I said, when Marjorie Ann did the Franklin and Franny Letters to Santa, that was when I had the extra mailbox. I reached out to Marjorie Ann and I was like, are you playing with me? Because I feel like I have extra pieces. And she broke it down on why you had options, not extra pieces. So if you guys don't want a full video or need it, um, you can send me a screenshot of a file of a piece. I don't want the file. I just want a screenshot. And I need it in the JPEG form. That way then I can go ahead and number it and send it back to you if you're really struggling and need help. But I need this picture. And I will go ahead and edit it. As you'll see in the video, I'm going to number them all in the order that I would piece them. And that'll at least give you a little bit of a guide. You don't have to do it that way. You do not have to do it in the order I do. It's just that is the order that I would have done it. And this is the JPEG for this little guy except the one with the top hat. Same file, just a different number. Uh, snowman. Or s'more man. Marshmallow man. Marshmallow snowman. Whatever you want to call him. Yeah. But if you're struggling, just send it, send me a picture of the JPEG file in Messenger. I'll number it and send it back to you in which way to layer it. And that's it, guys. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, let me know. But I was asked for this specific file, and I will see you guys soon with another piece.